Hi right, guys, welcome to the outdoors, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to the shed. This is uh, my little fleet of Craftsman riding lawnmowers. This is my old tractor, this is my new one. The old tractor wasn't running so well, so I bought a new one, and then I was able to, oddly enough, fix that one. So I removed the mowing deck off of it. I thought maybe I put a snowblower, but uh, we'll see about that. But in any case, this could probably end up being a good mule. And I have a camper that's in the front of the house. You saw the title of the video. You know what we're going to do here. We're going to install a hitch to this guy. And we're going to see if we can tow my camper, which is in the front of the house in a driveway. See if we can pull it through here, which is too small for my pickup truck. And see if I can park it back here next to the shed. So let's get started. I put a new battery in here and some fresh gas, so hopefully she starts. She's been sitting most of the season. And let's see, what do I got? Throttle up. There we go. So this is the hitch. I got this guy on Amazon. There's a few different ones you can pick from, varying reviews. I'll put the link to this one uh, in the description below. But it comes with what you see right here, a couple spots to mount, and then there's some additional hardware to add additional mounting points on here. We'll get this out of the bag in just a moment, along with some uh, bolts I think is in there. And you'll have to supply your own ball. Uh, there's a few different holes here. Uh, what this really is intended for is this hole is really to replicate the hole that's already in the back of the tractor. And I'll show that in a moment. So if you have a sweeper or a small trailer that you would pull with your tractor, uh, you can use this. Uh, and this bigger hole is for your standard, in my case, two-inch ball mount, which will go in there. So here's basically how this is going to work. You've got a piece of material here and here. Of course, your, your gears and stuff are up underneath here, but this is meant to tow, uh, you know, a small yard trailer or a sweeper or something. This is going to sit up here. And yes, we're going to have to drill some holes. And I also have some fins here I'm going to have to contend with, but so be it, that reinforces the, uh, the bend there. So there's a couple of mounts here at the bottom. We'll have to drill those out here. And then there's a piece that's gonna sit here. Your ball mount's gonna secure that. I'm just gonna push that back a little bit. And then you can pick either this guy, you know, to secure it up to the top here, or something a little more robust. This is probably what I'm gonna use. This guy and secure that up here just to give a little more reinforcement because uh you know it's not going to be a yard trailer it's going to be that camper hiding over there behind a the truck one additional thing that's pretty cool with this design is this part right here is slotted so when you do mount it should you want to use your original pin connector there uh, you can still access that So lining this up is uh, pretty simple. Make sure she's flush there in the back. Make sure you got that hole that I mentioned there is lined up. Take a marker and mark your holes. Easy peasy.
kind of your standard drilling affair. You know, get a punch or something to start your hole here to keep your drill from walking on you. Do that again, I don't think I did a good job. There we go. Nice and centered. Now I'm using a Craftsman corded drill, although a cordless drill. And again, Craftsman will do just fine. This would be a great Craftsman commercial. Craftsman drills, Craftsman tractor. The only reason why I'm not using this is because my battery uh, ran out and I didn't have the foresight to charge my battery, so I'm using a corded drill. And uh, line up on your punch and hopefully it doesn't walk on you because that's why you did the punch. Now this one kind of doesn't fit in here great, but I was able to do the other side without an issue. All right, sorry for the background noise. It seems anytime I go to film anything, doesn't matter what day of the week, my neighbor's got to mow her lawn. I don't understand it. Anyway, we got our holes drilled. Let's fast forward a little bit. And uh, whenever you drill holes in the metal, and this may be a little counterintuitive to what you might think if you're not used to doing this, you want to drill slow, not fast, slow, with a bit of pressure on it. Uh, if you have a high-pitched squeal, you're not doing it right. Go slower, put more pressure on it. In this case, this is not very thick. I didn't need any oil or anything like that, but um, it will also have a sharp bit. So let's see if I did a good job here. Drop a washer and a bolt. That looks pretty good. Drop a washer, drop a bolt. All right, I did a good job. So I'm gonna take one of these out real quick and get a bottom started here. Now, it uh, comes with four bolts and uh, washers and some nylock nuts here. Given the price point, although they look nice and shiny, I suspect it's not, you know, really high quality stuff, but that's fine. Get this back in here again. And let me find a bolt. Let me find a washer. There it is. Sorry, it's hiding on me. When you work with nylock, we only really go one way. Okay, just, just there for the moment. All right, we're going to use, once again, Craftsman tool set here to uh, go ahead and tighten these down. Next is actually install our ball. Now, if you can help it, don't get a ball like this. It's not the two inch part, that's okay. This flange is round all the way across. And when you go to tighten this down, there's nothing for a wrench to grab onto without you know marring into this. Uh, I got this at Menards. I really didn't pay attention when I got it. A good one is gonna have a couple of flat sides on here so you can get a wrench when you go to tighten this down. You'll see what I mean here in just a moment. So I'll need to put my included plate here. Drop the ball in there. Ball comes with a washer and a nut. It's a lock washer. And looks like everything fits in there okay. We're gonna go ahead and just get this started by hand here. All right, we got it started. Now, normally I would use a wrench like this. Uh, this is meant for ball mount receivers to tighten that ball down. Uh, I didn't do a test fit here. I'm not sure if this is actually gonna fit in here. And uh, you know what? It does not fit in here. So something to keep in mind, normally you would use this 
uh, doesn't fit, we're gonna have to come up with something else. Looks like I'm just gonna have to tighten it from the top. The nut here in the bottom seems to be locked into place by uh, by the hitch here. And we just gotta keep this back plate from turning a lot here. Not my favorite thing. Uh, everything about this has been pretty good so far except for this. Now, because I'm only going around my backyard, um, I'm okay with checking the tightness every now and then, I guess. Uh, that's what I'm going to have to do. Uh, I'm not going down the road with it, so it's not super critical. There's not a lot of risk here, but it's kind of a bummer. I kind of wish I could really secure this really well. Now, that locking washer we put in here will help, but I just wish this was a little more robust. Maybe I can get that wrench on here I was telling you about. Again, I don't have anything here on the side to uh, to really grab this, so I'm gonna use a pair of channel locks as soon as I can set the uh, a good uh, depth on it. And the reason why I'm using channel locks is because the teeth on here will, will grab pretty well. Hopefully I'm just not marring it up because this is not a real expensive setup here. Okay. So that's about as good as I'm going to get it, I think, for now. Next, this kit came with a total of four pieces of hardware. I used two of them here. There's two left. Now my earlier comment was I wanted to use this. And I would put one here and I'd put one here uh, and that would be okay, except I don't have a piece of hardware to attach this plate to this other extension that we put on here. I could probably run to the hardware store and, and get something. Um, or I can use the single plate that came with the kit. And there's already a hole here in my case, I think I think, I think, I think. No, it's not going to line up. So, I'm going to have to make a decision on what I want to use here. I thought when I first looked at this, this was maybe a little higher and uh, I wouldn't have to drill a hole, but it looks like that's really not the case. All right, so after some internal deliberation with myself, I've decided just to drill a single hole down here uh, instead of the two holes. This way I can use all of the supplied hardware. And quite honestly, and this is just my thought on this, uh, all this energy or whatever energy is gonna get transferred from the top of this uh, has to go through a single bolt anyway, so. It's got to go through right here when I'm installing. And um, so it doesn't really pay to have two bolts up here. I mean, it's really going to add uh, anything else or any other kind of benefit to the install here. And let's see if I did a good job of, there we go, drilling that hole. There you have it. One happy install. Now we're gonna go see if it works. This is my 1990 Jayco 1006 Deluxe pop-up camper. If you're following on the channel, you've seen this a couple times now. Uh, and I think I have one more video coming out with this here in a little while. But uh, yeah, just your kind of your standard old school pop-up camper. As you can see, we have the tractor backed up into it. 
and uh, we're gonna go ahead and lower this thing and uh, hope for the best here. Got this reasonably lined up here. A little bit of play in the tractor brake here. I think it's seating all right. Down and take a look. Didn't highball it. Yeah, it's in there. Get this out of the way. And voila. The front of the tractor didn't lift up off the ground, so we're doing okay. Now, being this is what it is, I'm only going a couple hundred feet. I'm not going to mess with the chains because even if I did have them on, I don't think they would really do anything. Uh, of course, there's no trailer lights. Not going to worry about that, although it would be kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> overkill, we're just going to the backyard. So uh, let's see how she does. got a little hill to go down here so hopefully the brakes will uh, work out pretty well here maybe I can do it with just a throttle but we'll see how it goes I can clear in the bush there what everything I'm supposed to be doing here like just throttle is doing it you can hear the hydrostatic work a little bit but it's not too bad now the rust is just managing clearances you can hear it working up the hill that's for sure but she's doing it we're gonna back it in that corner there All right, we made it to the backyard and she did it. Had a little bit of trouble going up and down some little divots and hills. You can see I tore the grass up here a little bit, just trying to back it in. I ended up going around this tree and just kind of recentering it, which worked a little better. Um, I should, and I showed you guys a little bit, but this is a, an old Kohler Courage, which is not, Kohler's best motor but 22 horses at least when it was new so definitely enough horsepower the transmission was definitely working but it did it it didn't again like some of these little inclines uh you know straight away if you got a little momentum it wasn't so bad but trying to angle it in here from a from a stop yeah that was a little tough on it but we got it so Basic question is, can your lawn tractor tow your pop-up camper around a yard or a campsite or, you know, on a farm or something, you know, with some minor inclines and stuff like that? Well, the answer is yes. Thanks, and stay tuned for more videos.